viewers out there. what's up what's going on youtube viewers out there it's your boy the hobby collector here to count down the top fundamental key things that you must have within yourself and build upon yourself to become a manager and get people to look at you as a manager and elevate you up to that manager status and um these are things that i listed down that i've noticed that i've been doing before i became a manager and i decided to put inside a list at first i was going to do different vlogs of me going to work before like do a vlog before i go to work and then after work and do a whole little series like that and just explaining the different things that's different being a boss and you know compared to being a worker and you know the different responsibilities but i decided to go ahead and put inside a countdown one whole little featured video so with that being said None of this stuff is aside any particular order. I've just been listing things down as I go. But trust and believe these are most definitely key things that you must have. You must have going for yourself if you want to be looked at and you want to become and maintain a manager or a boss status. Before I get started, here's one of the things I can't stand when somebody says. They say, well, if I was a manager, I work hard like you do. I'm like, man, don't you know the reason why I work so hard and I'm so focused when it comes to work? is because that's how I always worked. And that's the reason why I'm a manager. That's the reason why they made me a manager, because the way I work. You don't do things after you get something. You do it so you can get it. And when you do get it, you maintain it to keep it, period. I got to learn that inside relationships. So what it takes to become a manager? You got to like responsibility. I'm going to say that again. You got to like responsibility. Me, I love having responsibilities. Like, you know how, like, when you give a kid, you allow, you allow a kid to walk to the store for the first time or you allow them to do certain things on their own and you see how happy they get and how joyful they get, even if it is a chore. It makes them feel like, feel like, you know, I'm doing something. I'm actually doing something instead of my dad doing it for me or instead of these people doing it for me. I'm actually big enough. It makes them feel bigger and older. So you got to like responsibility, like getting stuff done good at giving directions literally so if you're a person that's good at giving map directions like oh you make a turn right here boom you go there there and people love the way you give directions you'll be you'll be good as a manager you know because that's what it takes to be a manager giving people specific directions because that's all you're going to be doing the whole time is giving directions like hey i need you to do this and then after you do that at this time do this and then put this over there if you know how to give directions real good and get people to understand exactly what you're talking about when you give directions then you're then you're good as a manager on time and hardly ever call out on time that's one one of the things i always struggle with. that's on my only downfall at work period that's the only thing that you could say bad about me you know i'm one of those ones that's always five to ten minutes late every single day especially when i was a regular worker nowadays i'm on time every single day because i have to be i'm a boss that's my only downfall everybody got the uh strength strengths and weaknesses you know but i'm one of those people where hey i might come five minutes five minutes ten minutes late but i work as good as two and a half men i bullshit you not but anyways if you want to be looked at as a manager and be taken serious and, and you know you got to be always on time and hardly ever ever call out I'm inside a position where if I ever call out on certain days, there's literally no other manager to, to fill my spot to get 25 to 30 workers on task so they can know what they're doing. So you gotta be a person, if you wanna get looked at serious as a manager, you gotta be a person that's always on time and hardly ever call out. Have tough skin. You gotta have tough skin. That's another thing, you know, when, you, when, when you're a regular worker versus being a manager, them words from management hit different. When you're a regular worker, they have to talk to you a certain type of way. They can't talk to you a certain type of way when you're a regular worker. When you are a manager, on the other hand, the interviews hit different. You have two interviews, and then inside the interview, there's two managers inside there with you, interviewing you at the same damn time. You know, um, at least for me, at least for my job, you know. Um, and then when you're a manager, when you get talked to about something that didn't go right, trust me, if your workers do something wrong, who are they going to come to? They first they're going to say something to the workers, a little bit to the workers, then they're going to come to you. What happened? You know, what took so long? Who was slowing down? I've seen some managers become a manager for the first time all happy, but then the next few days they crying and they end up losing, stepping down or end up, our management end up stepping them down because they're not tough enough. You know, you got to be tough, you know. Take pride in your work. This is one thing that I think everybody struggles on. Me, I take extreme pride in my work. You can tell by the way I walk around and do things and stuff like, the way I move, I just work with finesse. Like people even sit there and, and st stand there and watch me do things. And I get kind of, sometimes I like it, but then sometimes I feel kind of weird. People just stand there watching you. I'm like, oh, can I help you? Oh no, sir, sir, I'm just watching you. It's just the way you work. I just like watching you. <laughs>
Cause I just, I just, I don't know. You guys, it's just something that you gotta see to understand what I'm coming from. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Cause some of y'all do it too. You just gotta work with finesse. You gotta have pride, feel good about getting the job done. I love like when I used to be uh, stocking different departments and stuff inside frozen or inside different other departments and stuff, liquids. I love seeing everything messed up and out of place and then seeing how I look after I go through it and straighten everything up and fix everything right because it shows that I did all that. So when everybody are, is when everybody come by and impressed and everything, it makes me feel good because I know that I did that. You know, so I take pride in what I do. Show yourself inside your work. That's what taking pride in your work is, showing yourself in your work. Have a great personality and sense of humor. You know, me, uh, for the most part in person, you know, if you ever chill with me, I'm actually real chill and mellow and, and kick back. You know, I don't really talk a whole, whole lot unless I'm actually at work or having fun or on a game or something like that or we having a real good conversation other than that i'm super chill and quiet believe it or not but you know it's a time and place for everything and you got to understand and keep in mind that you interact with people all day long so you got to have a good personality you can't be having this shitty ass which a lot of managers do but you can't be having this shitty ass personality when people approach you and stuff and people ain't gonna want to talk to you they ain't gonna want to look at you they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna want to call out when they know that you're working when, when people know that I'm working, they actually want to come to work. But when people know that I'm not going to be there, they kind of want to call out. You know what I'm saying? And when you got people acting like that, that's that's good and bad at the same time. But it's good for your for your sake because you got people following behind you so much so to where they don't want to be there when you're not there. And you got to have a good sense of humor. You know, just be be funny. Make people laugh. Make people, people feel good. A lot of people don't want to be at work. You already know that. You know what I'm saying? So... What you can do as a leader, make them want to be at work. When you see them and they looking all down and feeling all bad, you know, make them feel good. Like I even see some people be working hard and they be tired, they want to be at work. And I be calling them number one. I'm like, oh, look at number one over there, killing it over there. Okay, I'll see you. And they, they just start laughing. They start blushing and everything. It's little stuff I be doing. That's just one of the ways, just for example, you know. Another thing, have patience. You know, it's going to be a lot of things you got to have patience with. And one of my biggest pet peeves is getting told I did something wrong when I didn't do anything wrong or getting told I don't know something based off of what other people are doing. You see a couple workers slacking off or not doing what they're supposed to do completely and you're looking at me like I'm not doing my job. Just because they're slacking off doesn't mean I didn't get on them about their job. I got on them, but they probably still decide to slack off. You know what I'm saying? I just hate getting looked at as if I'm not doing my job based off of what other people are doing or based off how different things are looking and stuff like that. So, um, but you got to have patience. You got to just, sometimes you got to just shut up and just let them tell you things that they think that they're telling you that you don't know. And I don't like that. I don't like when someone telling me something and then when I'm going, when I'm doing it, they're thinking that the reason why I'm doing it is because they just told me like, nah, motherfucker, I've been doing this stuff. I'm just doing it right now at the second because you think I don't do it. So I'm doing it right in front of you or whatever. It's just stuff. That's my biggest pet peeve. I, I hate getting told something that I know I do on a regular basis. And I hate being micromanaged. Tell me what you want done and don't bother me unless you see me not doing it correctly. I don't like people over my shoulder. Hey, do this. Okay, do this. Well, did you do that right? What about this? Like, I know what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I'm not one of those workers that need you over my shoulder that needs to be watched in order to do a good job. I do a good job without being watched. And I guess I bring that up next. Have integrity. You know what I'm saying? A secret to working good at any job. Pretend like you're being watched. Act like you're being watched. Pretend like you're on a game show. That's what I do. I act like I'm on a show and I got to have a certain amount of time to finish this. And people are watching me. I got to hurry up and do it good and do it all faster than the other person. I don't know. It's just it's mind games. You got to play with yourself and just have fun with what you do. You know what I'm saying? It may seem weird, but hey, it got me to where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling y'all something. Obviously, y'all need to be taking some notes. I'm, I'm being dead ass serious. You know, a lot of people don't be listening to what come out of my mouth. But for the people that do. I'm telling you, I can boost your ass up. You better just pay attention. Being an overachiever and work harder than the average person. If you're a regular worker and you are and you work harder and you go out your way to help other people inside other departments, you don't just go to work and be like, oh, I just did my job, so I'm just going to go slow, finish it up the rest of my work until the time go past since I'm done with everything else, so I'm going to go slow. You know, I ain't going to help nobody else, but if you're the type of person that hurry up and finishes your job, even if you know you're going to finish way ahead of time and you still go fast, Anyways, management definitely look at that. Trust me, you'll know if you're a manager because you'll start thinking different than the average person. 
you know, way different. Now, even when it comes to work, even outside of work, you will carry yourself different outside of work. And you got to be have integrity outside of work as well. You can't go to work and then leave work and then start sagging your pants and gang banging after dressing all like this. Like, come on, bro. Like, you got to be serious about your life. A job is your life. That's that's half of your life right there. Because without a job, where are you going to be at? Just like all these other dudes on the corner, on the streets, asking, asking for money. So, like I said, a job is half your life. Half smarts, high IQ, and common sense. It's funny how I have to put common sense inside there, but a lot of people just don't have common sense, and that's the reason why they don't elevate at any job. Like, they gotta, they constant, constantly get used to somebody telling them to do things, so they sit around and wait for somebody to tell them to do it instead of just doing it. Like, that's what makes me irritated when it comes to some workers. Like, yeah, I know I'm your boss. I know you're supposed to come to me and ask me questions, but bro, how long have you been working here? Why are you still asking me the same thing over and over? Just do it. If you know it needs to be done, do it. Why are you asking me? Just do it. You know? High IQ. So back in the back room where I work at, you know what I'm saying, you got to be really strategic the way you do things because there's limited space. And then you got to wrap pallets up with freight on it. You got to make sure the pallets don't fall over. I'm still teaching people how to build pallets without them, without them falling over. I know there's still people out there that can't build boxes on top of boxes. I don't understand why, but they, they having smarts and a high IQ, you can figure out things like that. There's plenty of times where I go walk the sales floor, I come back. And the back room is just a mess. Everybody act like they can't think to do this, move this here, then put that there, wrap that over here, move that over there so you can have space to that over there. That's what I come in. That's where I come in at. I'm super organized. That's why management love me, because I'm organized. I come in, okay, boom, what are you guys doing? This is, what, this is how you guys should do it. Watch, watch how I do this, you guys, watch this. Boom, 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 and then boom, boom, boom. That's how I do it. That impresses me when people actually pay attention to what I show them because I lead by example. A lot of management don't be liking me to do too much work, but I can't help it. I got to lead by example. I like to show people that I can do it. Let's go, Cap 2. Come on, Anthony. I'm sitting around. Let's go. So by them seeing me able to do it and stuff like that and doing it real fast and real quick, you know, it motivates them to do it. Also, being able to speak in front of people, that's hard. And that's another thing that be stopping people. But when you get used to it, it's like a job. You get used to a job, you know, boom. You know, it's something that you, you got to train yourself to get used to. You keep doing it and you exercise that, you know, it's an exercise. Um, but that's what stopped people from becoming a manager, even trying. I be telling people, nah, try, man, you gotta try. Nah, I don't like talking in front of people, I'm shy, and I don't like the computer work, it's like, I'm not good with computers. When you were born, a newborn, did you know how to lift weights? Did you know how to dribble a basketball? Did you know how to do a backflip? No, you know how to do none, didn't know how to do none of that stuff. You had to learn and practice and keep on practicing to do those things. So that's why I be trying to tell people, it, there's even some people that I'm over that'd be better than me as a manager. I'm able to admit that because I can see it. Like when you when you become something, you're able to see things that people don't see and they don't see it because I don't know what it takes. But since you know what it takes, you're able to see it real way easy than they can. Able to type and spell well. If you can't type and you can't spell, you know, you can't be a manager. You got, it's times you gotta send out emails. You gotta, you know what I'm saying? And everybody can see your email across the whole entire store. Can we send emails? Everybody can see it. So, well, it depends on the email you're sending. But, um, yeah, you got to type emails. You got to, you know, you got to know how to be able to write when you're typing up the reason why you're firing somebody, the reason why you're giving somebody a coaching. You got to be able to have correct spelling, type up everything, be real punctual, know where periods go. Don't want to pay attention in school. This is where that school stuff comes in that you know what i'm saying for real for real it's different things hit different when you're a manager when you're a boss everybody want to be oh i'm a boss i'm a boss i can tell people ain't no damn boss because you got to carry yourself a certain type of way and then a lot of people don't carry themselves that way the next thing is be responsible with not losing keys you just got to be responsible with keys you can't lose keys because what happens when you lose a set of keys especially if you're an assistant manager i'm not an assistant yet i'm not salary yet i'm still hourly hey but that rate of pay is Kind of sexy though, ain't gonna lie. But if you're an assistant manager and you lose keys, what happens is they will have to replace 
all the keys and all the locks inside the whole entire store. So that's why you gotta be responsible with not losing keys. Cause you know how much that will cost just to replace every single lock inside the whole store because you lost your keys? Yeah, you know, and you have a chance of getting fired too. Oh, that's another thing. When you're a manager, you have a real easy, it's way easier to get fired. You know, you can get fired just like that. You can do a good job for 10 years straight. One day you can have one bad day and you get your ass fired because of the particular thing that happened in that one bad day. Even though you had 10 years of nothing but good days, back to back to back to back to back, you can have one bad day and you get your ass fired. That's how it is being a manager and that's just how it is. It's crazy, huh? Yep. I'm telling you, people be thinking they know. That's why I'm making this video so people can really, really know. A lot of people be thinking being a manager is easy, and a lot, but it's really not. But then again, a lot of people be thinking being a manager is super, super hard, but it's really not. All right, so next, clean and very organized. That's the big thing for me because a lot of people that I work around with, even managers and stuff like that, is not organized. Like, I'm very, very organized. Not the most organized person, but compared to the average person, I am very organized to the point where even before I filmed this video, I cleaned up and stuff and walked around my house and it was just organizing stuff. I'm, I, like the, I like the sense of organization. Even if it is junky stuff everywhere, it still could be junky organized, you know, still organized, this there, you know, everything in order and stuff. I can't stand people who work and this work sloppy and then wonder why they don't got space to do anything because you're, you're, you're not, you're simply not organized, you know what I'm saying? Just take the time to do things right and have things out your way and set things up to where you have this flow of where things should be and how things should go, then, you know, things would be much more better, more organized. But when you're not organized, everything works against you. And same thing with clean, you know what I'm saying? People constantly, if you can't clean up behind yourself, how could you be a manager and make sure everybody else is clean behind themselves? You know what I'm saying? It's a lot that goes into being a leader. You gotta, you, you start as that foundation. I can't say that enough. Also, next up, not afraid of upper management. You can't be, you know, and a lot of people don't even know this, but you know, a lot of people wouldn't even think that this would be up on the countdown, not being afraid of upper management, but that's true. One of the reasons why I became a management manager is because I had to go off of management a couple of times, let them know where my skills lie, let them know how they're overlooking me, let them know that they're not doing their job correctly when it comes to certain things and stuff like that. You know, you got to know how to speak up. They, they, they actually take note of that and see that, okay, he's the type of person where if he was a manager, he'd be able to put his foot down and be like, hey, check this out, boom, 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 boom. And he's not really being super disrespectful with it. He's just mad, and but he at the same time, he's letting us know what's what's up, you know what I'm saying? So they look at that as well. You gotta know, you can't be scared of upper management. Plenty of times where CEOs and walk through the store and stuff and shook my hand and stuff. You can't be all nervous and shy. You gotta let them know, hey, I can be right alongside you. You know, I got smarts. You, get, you can't be, you gotta show people, you gotta take the opportunity to show and look them in their eyes and let them feed on your spirit to let them know, I ain't just anybody out here. I say that a lot. I'm not just no regular, regular person that's just coming to work every day. I can actually make some moves. I can actually have plans and ideas for you guys and stuff when it comes to making things better and making money and bringing, making this business even bigger. People can see that in you when you shake their hand and when you look at them, look them in their eyes and when you're talking to them and, 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 and giving them a grasp of who you are, you know, as a person and stuff and in your mind. I already bring this up already, but I'm gonna bring it up again just because it's next on the list and that is loud speaking with a solid tone. You know, it's a lot of times like inside my training and talking right now, I'm, I'm naturally soft spoken. So, so inside my training, every time I would talk, they would give me like this weird look like, okay, I can tell that he's a manager, but his voice don't really sound like he would be a manager or whatever. But then when I was explaining certain things and we had to talk in front of everybody inside the classroom, inside certain aspects, inside the training, that's when some of the uh, people were like, okay, yeah, now I can tell why you're a manager. Cause me, I know how to use my tone. Trust me, I'm a Leo. So I know how to, you know, talk with a, you gotta know how to talk loud with a solid tone. So when people ain't doing their job, they already know I, know I know how to get up on them. You know what I'm saying? They be like, hey, why we ain't getting this job done? Did I just tell you guys we need those two pallets over there wrapped up? I walked in, I walked away and walked back and you guys still don't got it done. What's going on? Like that, you know what I'm saying? When people be seeing me talk like that, but oh shit, okay Marvin, okay, shit. You know what I'm saying? Cause I got, I got that. And when my workers, they already know me already. When I give them that look, when I start standing there and looking at them like, they, they already know it's about to come. So they be like, okay, let me, let me, let me stop talking. Let me get to work you know, or whatever. So 
you know? Energetic and motivating, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be energetic, you know? I'm super, super, super energetic. I'm the most energetic at my whole entire job, you know, uh, besides like two other people. Um, we're like the top three energetic and those other two people are uh, regular workers. So, or should, I say, should I say other three people? It's like three or four people that's that's really, really on my level when it comes to the way they move and just getting stuff done, you know what I'm saying? And work with, you know, a sense of pride, you know, so. And I already bring up motivating, you know, you gotta be able to motivate people to work. It's gonna be plenty of times, there's times I go through all kind of stuff before I go to work. I got into a car accident kind of recently, me and my son, but we are, we're, we're, we're good though. We didn't, nobody got hurt on both sides. Had to go to work right after that, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, the next day I didn't end up going to work that day, but then just having all kind of stuff on your mind, and then on top of that, you're a leader, able to be mean. That's the number one thing that management got on me when I first started being a manager. Like, as soon as I started being a manager, the first day they wanted me to be all like, mean like they want like oh you're not mean enough you're not getting on the on the guys enough you're not you're not on them enough that's the number one thing i still hear i'm like y'all must not be paying attention because trust me you can ask them i get i get up on them it's just that when y'all walk back here y'all don't see it with y'all own eyes so y'all assume that it, that it don't be happening but trust and believe it happens like i get up on them i just don't be have to yell all the time like y'all do because mostly and let's, and let's be real, most of the time it's more female managers these days than male managers. Cause a lot of dudes don't just don't be on their shit. They don't be motivated to to be mature and and build upon their lives and, and get a good responsibility job. Women, they be way more serious than men way years bef before men start getting serious and want to elevate inside their jobs. But like I said, able to be mean. You know, you gotta be able to be mean and be mean and just leave it at that, you know? Don't be apologizing for it because you gotta be mean sometimes. Even some of my workers would tell me like, damn dude, nobody was liking you today, but you know, it's, it's, it's part of your job. So, you know, it's all good. You know, you are trying to get the job done. I, I feel you, you know, you, you got a job to get done. That's what it takes, you know, to push us. So, you know, and last but not least, even though it's not really the last thing as a whole, I know I could have added like three or four more things, but this video is already getting long and it actually is the last thing on my list. And that is you gotta like learning. You know what I'm saying? And that is gonna be your process forever. Being a manager, you're always gonna be learning something. The more you know about a job, the more different positions that you have working within the job, the more chances, the better off you are as a manager because you're able to train inside different areas. A situation came up to where we had a whole bunch of frozen stuff come in way before overnight crew came in that actually worked frozen. And then the people that work in the daytime, it wasn't enough for them to work frozen. So they asked me, can I get some people from my team and help them separate the frill? Cause they didn't know how to work frozen whatsoever. Cause they never have. I did, cause as a regular worker, as a regular worker, I used to work frozen and kill that shit. I even got vlogs of me doing it. So um, not me actually doing it, but me talking about, you know, working frozen and how it is and stuff like that. And I actually got a lot of views on that video. I was thinking about doing more, but now I'm a manager now. But um, yeah, so since they know I, know I got them skills, man, we tore that shit up. I'm like, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, see, and I, I, use, that as, I use that as a learning example to my workers. I'm like, you guys see this? Y'all be getting upset how we move you guys from what, you, what you're used to. You get upset when we try and teach you something new, but think about it. If I never would have learned something new, like working Frozen, we wouldn't have been getting this job done for, for, for the store right now making us and making the whole story and making management look good. You know what I'm saying? Like if it wasn't for me learning these different things, then how would I be able to teach y'all? With that being said, my camera's running out, of time, running out of memory right now, which is actually perfect timing because I'm ending, ending the video right now. Thank you guys for watching. For those of you that just stepped it up beside your job and you're watching this video, probably to motivate yourself to, you know, get better and do better then this is the perfect video for you. Anything when it comes to being a leader, this is a perfect video. That's why I did this video to help other people out there that's trying to, you know, build upon themselves or, you know, trying to see what it takes to be a manager and see if they can handle it. So with that being said, it's been your boy, the Hobby Collector, and I'm out. Peace.